Okay, everyone. The the final talk of this session is going to be uh, um, like uh, I guess uh, deconstructing the calculus of relations with tape diagrams, and uh, Alessandro Di Giorgio is going to present the talk. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, I would also like to thank my uh, two co-authors, Filippo Bonchi and uh, Alessio Santamaria. So uh, today I will be talking about uh, string diagrammatic languages uh, and uh, the calculus of relations. So string diagrams are becoming uh, increasingly more popular. They are not only just uh, a mere uh, notation anymore, but they're being used to um, describe in a compositional way various kinds of systems, including, for example, maybe the most notable example is that of the ZX calculus in uh, quantum computing, but they also appear in machine learning, engineering, uh, computer science, logics, and so on. So you may know that string diagrams correspond to uh, monoidal categories, meaning that uh, um, arrows of these categories are represented as diagrams, and the monoidal product is just uh, uh, drawing a diagram on top of each other, basically. Uh, but sometimes we would like to um, account for two monoidal uh, products. And in this case, uh, we're not anymore in a monoidal category, but rather in uh, a rig category. Uh, in some sense, string diagrams are not uh, uh, expressive enough to uh, represent the arrows of uh, these kind of categories. And an example of rig categories, which is, uh, is going to be our, our uh, leading example, is that of um, sets and relations. Uh, so rel has two monoidal um, products. One is the Cartesian product, and the other one is the uh, disjoint union of uh, relations. As we will uh, uh, see in the next few slides, uh, these two monoidal products are at the core of the calculus of relations. And then we ask ourselves, how can we uh, depict the arrows of these uh, categories? And, well, uh, I will show you these tape diagrams, which is one of the uh, main contributions of uh, our work. So just a little bit of background. The calculus of relations has been introduced um, in the 40s by Tusky as an attempt to do uh, mathematics without uh, variables. It's be, it is very simply presented by this syntax where we have a set of uh, relational symbols taken from a signature. Then this one here is denoting the uh, identity relation. Then we can compose uh, um, relations. And then this dagger here is the opposite relation. And finally, we have the intersection and union of relations with the respective units being the total relation and the empty one. Uh, semantics, instead, is given in terms of a model, where a model is uh, a pair made of a set x together with um, a function, rho, uh, which in basically interprets uh, the relational symbols in the signature as an actual uh, relation on X. Uh, then the semantics of R is uh, pretty straightforward. It's just applying rho to uh, R. And yes, the rest of the semantics is, uh, I mean, pretty, uh, pretty simple. Maybe it's uh, worth noticing that uh, the composition of relation actually corresponds to uh, the relational product. But then one question which is uh, natural to ask is uh, uh, completeness, axiomatic completeness. That is, can we find a set of axioms such that uh, um, uh, two expressions of the syntax are provably equal by means of these axioms whenever, any possible, whenever they are equal in any possible uh, model? So, uh, the answer to this question is that there is no such an axiomatization. This has been proved by, for example, by Monk in 1964, but it's actually an active line of research. People try to um, prove it for uh, maybe fragments of the calculus. And what we're going to do in these uh, rest few slides is to uh, change a little bit of perspective on the, on the calculus itself. So we're going to uh, look at a, um, a different syntax which encodes this calculus. Uh, which actually deconstruct this calculus, and uh, uh, we will try to give an answer to the um, completeness question. So let's start with the regular fragment, which is the one uh, which basically leaves out the union and the uh, bottom relation. Uh, this corresponds to regular logic, 
um, whose semantics is taken in the uh, category of sets uh, relations, but seen it as a monoidal category, um, where the um, tensor product is the uh, Cartesian product of relations. Uh, so this being a monoidal category uh, means that we can actually draw it as a, a language of string diagrams. Uh, this language is very elegantly presented by this uh, syntax, where we have the empty diagram, uh, a wire, a crossing of wires, this structure which uh, duplicates and uh, uh, discharges, um, and their mirrored versions. Uh, then for any relational symbols in a signature, oh, sorry, for any relational symbols in a signature, we have a box uh, with a wire on the left and a wire on the, li uh, on the right. And finally, we can compose them sequentially and uh, in parallel. So I'll not give you uh, the detailed semantics of this language, but I'd rather show you uh, with an example how uh, diagrams in this language uh, behave. Uh, so consider the set, of, the set X of these colorless shapes and uh, two relations R and S on X. Now, consider this uh, diagram based out of the syntax we saw before. And what we will try to do is to uh, construct the relation denoted by this diagram uh, to, yes, to see uh, what is actually uh, meaning. So imagine we have uh, a blue circle on the left. Then uh, what the duplicator does is to indeed duplicate the blue circle, which is then related to R uh, and S by their definition. So, uh, uh, the, the um, red square is related to the blue circle by R, and uh, um, red square and the uh, green triangle are related to uh, the blue circle by S. Uh, but then the co-copier, uh, the semantic of the co-copier, asks that the uh, values on its two left wires must be the same. And so the um, green triangle gets discarded. Finally, we uh, merge these two uh, squares, and we get a red square on the right. So basically, this means that uh, in the relation denoted by this diagram, we have the pair blue circle and red square. Now, if we try to do the, uh, if we iterate this process with uh, all the rest of the symbols we have in the set X, uh, we will see that, for example, the green triangle gets duplicated again, but this is not related to anything uh, by R and S, and so it just gets discarded. OK, if we uh, keep doing this with the uh, red square and the diamond, we will see immediately that the only pair in the relation is actually this one. Um, and most importantly, this relation is actually the conjunction of uh, R and S. So why did we deconstruct uh, the regular fragment. We took uh, basic operations uh, in the um, calculus of relations, which is the conjunction, and we indeed deconstructed into uh, three different parts. One is the monoidal product of R and S, and the other ones are uh, this precomposition and postcomposition with this uh, duplicator and co-duplicator. Uh, but most importantly, these uh, smaller pieces of our syntax are, in some sense, well behaved. They um, satisfy a set of um, equational laws, which reflects a, a very well-known uh, algebraic structure. So for example, uh, our co-duplicator is a monoid. Uh, the duplicator is a comonoid. Together, they are one of the fundamental ways in which monoid and comonoid uh, interact, which is the uh, Frobenius p monoid. Then they satisfy some lax naturality condition and a joinness condition. All in all, these are the axioms of uh, Cartesian bicategories. And this axiomatization is actually uh, complete for uh, REL, seen it as a monoidal, uh, as a monoidal category, yes. Uh, this means that I can take any two uh, diagrams from my syntax with the private types, and this will be uh, equal by the set of axioms whenever there uh, any possible interpretation of them in rel as a relation uh, are also equal. OK, but let's move. Uh, this has already been done. Let's move to the uh, coherent fragment, the one which 
uh, includes also the union of relations and uh, the bottom relation. Um, so this time, this uh, fragment takes its semantics in uh, a rig category. Uh, it's again rel, but we have two monodal products, the Cartesian product and the disjoint union of uh, relations. Uh, well, unfortunately, this is a rig category, and then we don't know how to uh, depict its arrows. We don't know how to deconstruct this fragment. And so our solution is the diagrams, which are um, nicely uh, represented in this way, in, the, in this two-layer grammar, where the first layer is exactly the one we saw before, uh, the one of string diagrams, and the second layer um, is actually how we construct tapes. So we have, uh, again, we can have the empty diagram or um, the uh, identity, which is a single red tape with an identity line in it. Then they can cross. We have this some sort of branching structure. And maybe the most important uh, uh, rule of this grammar is that uh, inside of a tape, we can have this uh, uh, box with a C in it, which is representing a, a string diagram made out of the syntax above. Um, let's say the motto of the string diagrams, of the tape diagrams, is that they are string diagrams of string diagrams. And um, yes, of course, I can uh, compose them sequentially and in parallel. Notice that I can also compose uh, string diagrams in parallel inside of tapes. And these are exactly the two monodal products of uh, the RIG category. OK, again, I will show you an example of how these things works. Now we are also considering a relation Q between the diamond and the triangle. So this is a tape diagram having uh, a single relation Q uh, in its top uh, tape. And on the bottom, we have the uh, string diagrams we saw before the one representing the intersection between R and S. So imagine we have a diamond here on the left. Then uh, this diamond doesn't get duplicated, but actually it, mm, it follows a branching behavior. So it goes, for example, on top. Uh, and then this is related to Q. Uh, uh, sorry, it's related to the um, uh, green triangle by Q. And this green triangle goes on the right. So this means that uh, in the relation denoted by the diagram, we have uh, this pair here. Uh, but the diamond could also go on the bottom. Now, if you remember from the uh, example before, there is no um, pair with a diamond for this diagram, for the diagram in the bottom. And so this gets discarded. OK, if we iterate this process with the other elements of x, we will see that the blue circle goes on top. This is not related uh, by anything um, with Q. Uh, gets discarded, and if it goes on the bottom, we get uh, this barrier. Um, sorry, maybe, I, may, maybe it was a little bit too fast, but it was blocked here, freezed. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, this is the uh, old relation that we can uh, construct, and uh, this relation is actually uh, is actually the union of Q with the intersection of R and S. So again, we succeeded in uh, deconstruct the uh, union, which is the last piece we had in our um, uh, fragments. And actually, we also succeeded in uh, mixing union and uh, intersection. Um, so also, the, uh, also tape diagrams uh, allows for an axiomatization. Uh, again, these branching structure are uh, monoids and commonoids, they interact in the other fundamental way in which monoid and commonoid interact, which is by algebras. Uh, they are natural, uh, and these are all in all the axioms of finite by products. Um, OK, if we also add the axioms of Cartesian Picadoris, those we saw before but uh, taped, and some adjoinness condition, we will get the axioms of uh, finite by product Cartesian Picadoris, which are a special kind of three categories, let's say. And, but uh, the, the, um, the main result of our work, uh, one of the main results of our work, is that these axioms are actually uh, complete for the coherent fragment. And uh, let me spell this uh, in a little, bit, uh, a little bit more details. So if we call TCB the category of tapes built out of the syntax we uh, just presented, and uh, if we consider a model as a, a, a functor 
between TCB and RHEL preserving the rig structure, then the completeness theorem basically says that uh, I can take uh, any two tapes in TCB, and then these are uh, equal by the set of axioms, the finite product Cartesian B categories axioms, whenever they are uh, uh, the their image along the functor M for any possible M is also equal. Okay. Um, actually, tape diagrams are a little bit more uh, general than this. We, um, um, I just show you an example for the um, calculus of relation, but actually inside of a tape, I can have any language of string diagrams. And so, for example, let's take the case of ZX calculus, uh, in which diagrams like this, well, here I use a little bit of a syntactic sugar, but um, diagrams like this denote uh, linear maps which are the arrows of um, the category of finite spaces and linear maps between them. Uh, now, FD ILB is um, a monoidal category. I can compose this diagram uh, in parallel and get their chron the Kronenberg product of um, the two linear maps. But in this specific case, uh, I could take the union of um, these two, sorry, the sum of these two uh, diagrams and so the sum of the linear maps they represent. And if u is a unitary, this would give me a, uh, a representation of a controlled unitary. Uh, but we did this in a, a mixture of notation. We, got, um, we get the uh, diagrammatic notation for the diagrams, but uh, here we're still algebraic in some sense. Um, so the nice thing about tapes is that uh, we can indeed embed uh, these uh, diagrams inside of a tape and then uh, the representation of the controlled unitary will be, in some sense, immediate and also, uh, uh, at least to me, intuitive, since we have this branching uh, structure. Um, okay, to conclude, the two main contributions of our paper um, is that we provide a um, uh, tape diagrammatic language for uh, three categories with uh, finite byproducts. And uh, we used it to give a complete axiomatization for the uh, positive fragment of the calculus of relations. Uh, some future work include um, exploring in a little bit more detail the example on ZX tapes I just presented you, um, but also uh, non-deterministic process, uh, processes as tapes, as we um, already know that uh, non-deterministic processes of Petrinets form a rig category. And so the natural language to explore them would be tapes. Um, then, of course, we would like to account also for uh, negation in the calculus of relation, which is the very last bit we uh, leave out. We leave out. Um, and finally, some preliminary results shows that if we add the uh, categorical trace to uh, the outer monoidal product of tapes, we get some sort of uh, iteration. And this allows us, for example, to express a very simple programming language. Um, and also, for example, uh, we could use it to uh, give uh, uh, some sort of uh, graphical version of uh, our logic in which uh, we don't have triples, but um, rather inclusion between uh, diagrams. So this is pretty much it, and thank you for your attention. Okay, we have lots of time for questions, so maybe start over here. Oh, well, go on. Let's start with him. Um, so I guess I think that, well, I guess I think of the defining thing about rig categories as being the distributivity isomorphism. Did you, maybe I missed it, but did you, did you show what that looks like in your diagrams? So not in this talk. Uh, okay. In the paper, we have uh, a picture of it. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it's a composition of the um, uh, symmetries of the uh, outer monoidal product, so symmetries of tapes, and then symmetries inside of tapes, so the, uh, of the other tensor product. Okay. 
Oh, by that I mean the uh, left distribution. Uh, the other one is uh, streetified to an identity. Hi, thanks for the very nice talk. Uh, I was wondering if you knew about the work of Paul Sobosinski about uh, Pierce existential graphs. So yeah, it's like exactly the same axiomatization, but for you, you have the negation, as you said on, on your last slide, uh, but you don't have the representation of uh, on this junction. But uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm uh, pretty much familiar with it. Um, So the question is, uh, if I understand correctly, how this, uh, if, if they generalize this work, if that uh, piece of notation generalizes this work, or? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it does generalize this because, as I said, they don't have this tape uh, representation for this junction. It's defined from negation, uh, as you would do in classical logic. So the, um, the point about that work is, uh, uh, I may be wrong about this, huh? but, uh, I think that the axiomatization is uh, uh, not proved to be uh, complete. Or at least the argument is that uh, uh, you can encode uh, piece existen existential graphs into uh, that string diagrammatic language, and, uh, uh, and then we're complete, because we know that piece diagrammatic language are uh, complete. Uh, but uh, the point is that they don't uh, highlight what are the fundamental structures of uh, um, uh, of the disjunction and of the negation itself. At least uh, this is my uh, personal point of view. But okay, thanks. Alan, next. Hi there, I'm so Alan Jeffrey, currently at Roblox, long time ago at the University of Sussex. Um, I, so well, this this works really nice in the like um, string diagrams give a really natural model for data flow languages. Um, and for a long time, I've been quite frustrated about the lack of mixed control flow and data flow models. Um, the thing that's interesting about the, the presentation that you gave here is that um, a, it's only a two-level structure. So, so um, you can nest a product structure inside co-product structure, but not the other way around. Um, and this all works because you can convert everything into conjunctive normal form. Yep. But that does have an exponential blow up, so it means the graphs are exponentially large compared to the, to the syntax. So I was wondering if you actually explored the, the, the design space where you allow nesting in both directions? Uh, to be honest, no, we didn't look into it. Uh, it would actually be very, very interesting to, to account us for this. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry I cannot give you any <laughs> uh, insight on this because I, I, we really didn't check it. So. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions? Okay, then. Uh, thank you.